For instance, I motivate someone to build up a relationship with their spouse. Uh, kwa mfano ni mejenga uhusiano wa mtu na mwenzake katika ndoa. Probably you know you'll be surprised to so many Christian families between the husband and the wife there's not much love. Uh, kwa mfano unaweza kupata ama kwa mshangao unaweza kupata katika ndoa ya wakristo kwamba hamna uhusiano ambao ni sawa sawa ulio na upendo. And many of them don't have the motivation to work on it. Na wengi hawana hawana nguvu ama mawazo ya kutiana moyo ili waendeleze ndoa yao. They will say I I don't like how he behaves or she behaves. Wanaweza kusema kwamba sipendi jinsi ana ana sipendi tabia yake jinsi anavyokuwa mbele ya watu ama mama hapendi baba hapendi. So it's hard to to uh, change a relationship <laughs> but we can motivate like this. Now it will apply to you too. If your marriage relationship or relationship with someone is not good. Then first we can think about how much pain that problem has brought to us. Ah uh, sasa angalia uone jinsi gani hii uchungu umeleta shida katika uhusiano wetu. When in the family there's not much love. Katika jamii ambayo haina upendo kwa wingi. That there will be probably pain every day. Hakika tutakuwa na machungu kila siku. And also very often they you know the feeling is uh, being hypocritical. Na kila saa ile mafikirio yao itakuwa ya kinafiki. But in a church they might, you know, be nice, they might be leaders. E, na ukweli wanaweza kuwa ni viongozi ambao wameaminiwa kwa kazi fulani. But at home they they yell at each other or fight with each other. Na wanakuwa na mambo ya kuchukiana na hata kupigana. How can we motivate them to work on it? E, tunaweza kuwatia moyo namna gani ili watende kazi kwa pamoja. So we we'll first ask how much pain does that bring to you? Na sasa lazima tuangalie kwamba haya mambo yanaleta uchungu wa aina gani katika huduma hiyo. How difficult it is for you to live like that. Ni vigumu ni vigumu vipi kuishi maisha ya aina hiyo. And do you want something to change? Na sasa unataka kitu kibadiliki? And do you believe that God has a wonderful plan in your life? Na umeamini kwamba Mungu ana mpango mzuri kwa ajili yako ya maisha ya baadaye? That God can do something in your family? Mungu anaweza kufanya jambo katika jamii na familia yako. If you, in your family there is more love, kwa katika hiyo familia kama tuna upendo wa kutosha. Then you have more peace. Tuna amani ya kutosha. The two of you can can pray together. Can encourage each other. When you feel tired, the other person can support you. And can pray together and have strength. And God's plan will not come true until we love each other in the family na mpango wa Mungu hautatimilizwa mpaka tuombe na tufanye kazi kwa pamoja katika familia Jesus for myself if i go and train other people to serve god god kwa mfano wake yeye akaanza kuombea watu wafanye kazi katika huduma ya Bwana if i fight with my wife every day akipigana akipigana na mke wake kila saa kila siku I would have guilt feeling in my heart ataanza kuwa na fikira mbaya katika moyo wake And then then I would be ruining I would you know would not be able to follow the perfect plan of God. Atakuwa anaangamiza na hatakuwa na uwezo wa kufuata mpango kamili wa Mungu. And do you believe that if you can give in to each other then you can get more blessings from God. Na unaamini kwamba kama tutatiana moyo kwa pamoja na tufanyie kazi kwa pamoja basi tutaleta baraka za Mungu karibu nasi. God can God wants to bless you more. Pardon? God wants to bless you more. Mungu anataka kukubariki sana. But because of the fighting in the family, God's love cannot flow in your life. Lakini kwa sababu ya kupigana 
kupigana kila saa katika jamii na familia yenu basi upendo wa Mungu haushuki kwa ajili ya jamii and your life can go higher and higher when you follow God na maisha yako yanaweza kupanda yakaenda juu juu sana wakati unapomfuata Mungu so are you willing to work on it eh wewe umekubali kufanya kazi kwa upendo If you're willing to say something nice to him or her, kama wewe unakubali kufanya na kusema neno nzuri kwa ajili ya yule mchumba ama yule mke wako ama yule mwana wako. And if we can think about the person because of the suffering in the past so now he has a lot of frustration or anger. Na tunapoanza kugongea na mtu ambaye amepitia katika hali ya kufinyiliwa, kusononeka na tunamuona jinsi alivyosononeka. So we can have compassion on the spouse. Tunaweza kuwahurumia hiyo jamii ama hiyo wanadamu. And say I understand your problem. Na kuambia kwamba tumeelewa shida zenu. And I would like for us to come to God together. Na kwa, kwa, kwa sababu tunataka tuingie kwa Mungu kwa pamoja. To have more strength from God. Ili tuwe na nguvu katika Mungu. And work on our marriage. Na tuweze kutenda kazi katika ndoa zetu. When our marriage get better. Au ndoa zetu zikiwa nzuri we both will benefit from it. na sisi tutakuwa na faida sisi wote and our children can benefit from it. watoto wetu watafaidika so this is motivation by the grace of god hii ni kutiwa moyo kwa neema ya mungu and i want to say that many people's marriage is not good mnaweza kusema hivi ndoa za watu wengi si nzuri not because they are both bad people si kwamba wote ni wabaya but because they are not prepared to accept the witness of the other person lakini mmoja wao ama wote hawajakubali kukubali mwingine jinsi alivyo and a lot of times they would say negative words to each other na ma 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 sehemu mingi mtu anaongea ubaya wa mwenzake they give pressure to each other wanashukuma mwenzake kutenda mambo ambayo yanaenda and so they both suffer na wote wana hatimaye wanaumia now for marriage i have I can in a session that talk about it. Ah, kwa mambo ya wanandoa nitaongea pale baadaye kuingia zaidi. But what I mean is I always motivate people with the love of God. Lakini jambo ambalo ninasema ni kwamba natia moyo watu kwa upendo wa Mungu. How much God can you know bless your family? Vile Mungu anaweza bariki familia yako. Are you willing to let God bless your family? Umekubali Mungu abariki familia yako? Yeah. Okay. Now for instance if I motivate a child your child to study how can I motivate them eh, Kwa mfano nikitia moyo mtoto wako mwana wako ile aendelee kusoma zaidi unaweza kusikiaje I will tell them, you know the little child and say you are very special Eh unaweza kuambia mwana mtoto mtaka kwamba wewe ni maana Now this is how you can help your children to grow you know to to love God more or to be more responsible even if you tunaweza kusaidia kusaidia watoto wako wapende Mungu zaidi na waweze kuchukua majukumu yao kisawasawa we can tell the child that you are very special tunaweza kuambia mtoto kwamba wewe ni waajabu God is a wonderful plan in your life. Mungu ana mpango mzuri kwa ajili ya maisha yako. Do you believe that God loves you? Unaamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda? And he can do great things to you. Anaweza kufanya vitu vikubwa kupitia kwako. Now first we need to believe that our children can grow up to be better. La be great Christians. Lazima tuamini sisi wenyewe kwamba watoto wetu wanaweza kukua na wakakuwa wakristo wakubwa na wazuri kuliko hata sisi. So we keep telling them that you are special. Tunazidi kuwaeleza kwamba ninyi ni wa muhimu na ni wa maana. You can become great people. Mnaweza kuwa watu wazuri zaidi wa Mungu. And you can do great things for God. Mnaweza kufanya mambo makubwa kwa Mungu. Do you want that? Unataka hiyo. And if you want that, kama unataka hiyo. So what can you do? Utafanya nini ili ufikirie maneno? I'm a great person. Ili uwe mtu mkuu. Do you want to study? Lazima usome kwa bidii. Do you want to be responsible? Wewe ukuwe mtu wa kujukumika. You want to pray. Unataka kuomba. So I motivate children by telling them they are special. Yaani ukiambia watoto kwamba wao ni wa muhimu na wa maana. And I motivate all of you. Na unawati na tiwa na watia moyo ni wote. Don't despise yourself. Usijidharau mwenyewe. You are all very very special. Ninyi wote ni wa maana sana. 
Don't say I don't have much money. Don't say I don't have much education. And so I cannot do much for God. Those are lies Satan wants to put in your heart. God's power exceeds our uh, shortcomings. Even if we don't have much education, when we really hunger for God, God will raise up our life. Now I hope in these few days, you will say, yes, it's good to live in the love of God, to be motivated by the love of God, I want to follow God's plan. And you really pay attention to learn. And apply it to yourself every day. Every day we say to ourselves, God loves me. I'm special. I can do greater things. I can go higher and higher. Now when you believe that and trust in God, I want to tell you your life will go higher and higher. Before I experienced the Holy Spirit, I was a totally different pastor. I was At that time I thought, you know, what what can I do being a pastor? Just preach and teach and you know try to do evangelism and then I, I just think well there's not much I can do it's hard to change people but after experience the Holy Spirit I Learn to enjoy God. I have much strength from God. And I pray much. And whatever I do, I'm thinking of God all the time. I find that God gives me many good teachings. And when I pray for people, many people experience the presence of God. So I raise up people to serve God. And then God motivates me to train pastor and devoted Christians. So with time, you know, as time goes on, I find that my life go higher and higher. And when I obey God, I find that God provides for me. So I hope that you have this in your mind. Don't be limited by what we can see. God has unlimited potential. God has unlimited blessings. And we trust in God and have a good relationship with God and follow Him and obey Him and give our life to God. We will find that our life go higher and higher. And then if I'm ministering in a church, when I notice anyone have the motivation to dedicate their life to God, I always tell them, it's great that you have this motivation. It's God who works in you that you have this motivation to serve Him. 
God is making this happen in your life. And you're responding to God. You're going higher and higher in your life. You have become a great person in God. So this is how I motivate people. By the grace of God. Do you have any questions? That, you know, I hope you motivate yourself like this too. Let me tell you, there are I come across difficult people from time to time too. Sometimes what people say to me makes me feel very difficult. But I will keep telling myself. God loves me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. All the days of my life before my, one of them came to me were written in your book. This is in Psalm 139 verse 16. All the things of our life before one of them came to me were written in your book. And what God has written in heaven is a wonderful, wonderful plan for you. One day when you go to heaven, you'll be surprised how wonderful this planet is. And many people say, I didn't realize that when I was on earth. So I wasted my life. But if you understand, know it now, and then you you tell yourself, everything I do for God, God is very happy. And I'm doing it better and better now. So God is raising me up to a higher level. So this is how we can motivate ourselves. Whenever we notice we have improved in anything, we say to ourselves, you've done a good job. You've worked on it. You've improved. Even though we might have shortcomings, but we look at how we have improved. And say, I have been improving. Okay. okay. Have you noticed how when I talk to you, it's all positive? Yes. It makes you treasure your life, right? It helps you to understand how great God is. And understand how much God wants to bless you. So I hope all of you will say, Wow, it's so wonderful to have this wonderful God. Okay, so you understand this motivation by the grace of God. The motivation by the law is only when people refuse to repent. For instance, people commit adultery. We, we can tell them, first, your life can go very high and God can bless you. If you obey God, your life will go better and better. But if you commit adultery, you can lose 
the relationship with God and you can also lose salvation. Unapofanya mambo ya usharati, unaweza kupoteza Mungu na tena unaweza kupoteza uokovu wako. That is warning by the law. Hiyo ndio onyo ya sheria. We need to use warning by the law. Tatakana tutumie onyo kwa sheria. For instance, in Matthew 7 a chapter 7 verse 21 to verse 23 Matayo 7:23 Matayo 7:23 Where it says that not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven But only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven And on that day say to me siku hiyo kuna wengi watanijia na kusema have i not preached in your name si nimehubiri kwa jina lako has i have i not cast out demons in your name nimetembea mapepo kwa jina lako have i not performed miracles in your name nimetenda miujiza kwa jina lako but jesus will say to them lakini yesu anasema truly i tell you ukweli nakwambia i don't know you sikujui wewe so this is warning he ni onyo that now God has many blessings for us. Mungu ana baraka mingi kwa ajili yetu. And if we follow him we will be blessed. Tukimfuata tutabarikiwa. But if we don't follow him, tusipomfuata. But we don't obey him, tusipomtii. Jesus might say I don't know you. Yesu atasema sikujui. We are not saved by doing good works. Hatuogopi kwa kutenda matendo mazuri. We are saved by trusting in Jesus as our savior. Tunaokolewa kwa ajili ya kuamini kwa Yesu Kristo. Jinsi nilivyosema kwa hapa. When we trust in Jesus as our savior, tunapoamini kwa Yesu kama mwokozi wa maisha yetu. We will obey God. Tunamtii Mungu. If someone doesn't obey God, na mtu asipomtii Mungu, there is a danger of losing salvation. Kuna hatari ya kupoteza uokovu. So there is a place for warning. Hapa ni hapo ndio sehemu ya onyo linaingilia sasa. But for sure Christians every day. Lakini tukio wa Kristo kila siku. We don't say if I don't serve God today I'll lose my salvation. Ah, hatuwezi kusema kwamba nisipokoka leo napoteza uokovu wangu. Hapana. We can run away by the grace of God. Tunaweza kujiwa moyo kwa neema ya Mungu. God likes everything I do for him. Mungu anapenda kile kitu unachofanyia kila wakati. God is very happy with me. Amefurahi na nini? And God will reward me. Mungu naye atalipa zao zao. So I want to serve him more. Naenda kumtumia kia zaidi. Okay? So you understand we need to motivate first with the grace of God. And then sometimes when people don't repent them we need to use the law also. Nijua kwamba sasa kumbe tunahitaji kutia moyo watu wanapokuja katika Bwana na tena tunahitaji kupeana onyo kwa wale watu ambao wanatoka kwa Bwana. But all, but all Christians should know the warning in the law of God. Lakini wa Kristo wote lazima wazue onyo katika sheria ya Mungu. Okay, any question? Swali kufikia pale tena. Okay, now I'm going to apply this to how we talk with people with the grace of God and the law of God. How to apply it in our conversation. Tunaweza sasa kuweka namna gani katika matendo mambo haya ambayo tumejifunza tumejifunza katika kipindi hiki. Okay, you can stop both now. Stop both and then restart. Start it. Stop it. We have talked about using the word of God. Tumesema kuhusu kutumia neno la Mungu. The word of grace on na, people. Na neno la neema kwa watu. And the word of the law on people. Na neno la sheria kwa watu. Now we're going to apply to our daily conversation. Sasa tunataka kuweka katika mazungumzo yetu ya kila siku. In our daily conversation we also have human grace and human law. Lakini katika mazungumzo yetu ya kila siku kuna neema ya wanadamu na neema ya Mungu. The human grace would be like this. Na neema ya wanadamu itakuwa hivi. They will say to people, I care about you. Utaambia mtu nakujali sana. I love you. Nakupenda. You are important. Wewe ni wa maana. Your your life can go higher and higher. Maisha yako inaweza kuwa mambo kama. Okay. So we have talked about the grace of the word of grace of God and the word of the law of God. Tumezungumza kuhusu neno la neema ya Mungu na neema ya wanadamu. 
And I want to talk about the word of grace of key people and also the word of law of people. I want to tell you that this is very important in human relationship and human communication. Word of grace will be like this. I care about you. I love you. I want to help you. You are special. You are important. So this is a word of grace to people. And then the words of the law to the people. We need to say this every day. Please wash the dishes. Please clear the garbage. How can we say it in a way that doesn't offend people? Now this happened in homes and in church a lot. When people talk, use the word of the law, they offend each other. For instance, a person might say to the spouse, you never clear the garbage, you never wash the dishes, you don't wash the dish, the dishes clean. And you are not responsible. Have you heard words like that? What does that make you feel? Does it motivate you? It hurts you, right? But we need to say words of the law. How can we say it? So now I'm going to say, explain how we can say it in a way that we don't offend people. First, we should say more words of grace. You are special. I want to make you happy. And also appreciation. I appreciate what you have done for me. Thank you for cooking for me. And thank you for the people who cook for us. Just cook the lunch for us. Thank you the worship team. And thank you for the sound system people. So words of appreciation is it's it's encouraging. People. And we can say to the people who serve God in the church. I'm so happy to have you serving God here. We can work together to you know, help the church grow. And your part is important. And we always tell people how much they have done for the church. Does that, would that encourage you? If someone appreciate what your ministry? And also the members here can say to your pastor here and say, Pastor, you're doing a good job. You have helped me a lot. Let me ask the pastors, do many people appreciate you for what you've done? Very few. Very few. Now, if they say it, how does it make you feel? Yeah. So I want to say to the members here, your appreciation to the pastor will build him up. It encourage him. 
And also the pastor can say to the members, Na tena msungazi anaeza ambia wa shirika. I'm happy to see you. Nime fry kuwaona. I'm happy that you want to learn. Na tuwa kuwamba nini mwanataka kujifunda sana. I'm happy that your life is changing. Nime fry kuwamba maisha ya kuwa na badulika. But let me ask you, why are people reluctant to say words of appreciation? Ya, sasa oja ni kuwambie, ni kuwa nini watu wanasita kusema manelo ya kushukuru? People are reluctant to say words of appreciation because they say, you did not appreciate me first, I don't want to say it for you. Aha, wanasema kwa ba, kwa nini wanasita, kwa sabo wanasema, wewe hauku nishukuru, sasa hini suwezi kukushukuru. Another reason is, sababu ni hii, if I say that you are nice to me, that means you are better than I. Aha, nikisema wewe ni mzuri, utajizi kwa ba wewe ni mzuri sana kunisika. And I want to be better than you. Not for you to be better than me. Now, let me ask you, when you say something right or something good, do people say, wow, that's a good idea? What do you say? Unapu ambia mtu neno mzuri, neno ambalo nilio sawa sawa. Watu wanasema, hiu ni wazo mzuri. Do people say, wow, that's a good idea. It's wonderful that you said it. Do people say that? What do you say? Seldom, right? Seldom do they say it. What do you say? Because they think that if they say it, they might spoil you. Wanafikiria kwamba wakikuambia umefanya kitu rahisi, kitu nzuri, kitu ambacho ni sawa sawa, wanafikiria wakikuambia utaharibu wengine. Or they think that if they say it, it will make you proud. Na wanafikiria wakikutia moyo na kukushukuru kwa mambo uliyofanya mazuri, watakufanya uwe na kiburi. Or they might think that if they say it to you then it will make you higher than they are. Na wanafikiria kwamba wakikushukuru kwa kazi uliyofanya mzuri, watakufanya uwe can we all start to learn to say that to people? Now, can you say some words of appreciation to the person next to you? Now, if you know that person, you can say something specific about that person. So Jesus was saying, whatever you do, little thing you do, I appreciate that. And I will reward you. And then in the Beatitudes, he said, everything you know you do in the kingdom of God to have this to show the, the life of God that is blessed are you. Sasa, anasema katika majukumu wa Matthew 5, inasema kwamba, unatiu, unamutia moyo alia mdogo, ukimtendea alia mdogo mzuri, unatenga mashayako mazuri katika ufana na wamungu. You read the Bible carefully. Kusoma by Biblia kimakini. You notice there are many words of appreciation from God. Utakudua kwamba kuna mambo mazuri ya kushukuru kutoka kwa mungu. And Jesus said about the woman who anointed him. He said that in the whole world, wherever the gospel is preached, 
This woman's story will also be told. Akasema kwamba mahali popote injili itahubiriwa ulimwenguni hii injili ya kulipaka mafuta itahubiriwa. And then when Peter say that he was the Christ the son of living God. Wakati Yesu alisema wewe ni Kristo mwana wa Mungu anayeishi. And Jesus said this is not from flesh and yes. Yesu akamwambia ufunuo huu sio wa nyama na mwili. It's from the heavenly Father who revealed that to you. Ufunuo huu umetoka mbinguni kwa baba yetu. And on you on this confession I'll build up the church. Na katika ukili huu mimi nitajenga kanisa juu yake. And then when David said, "Yes, Lord, I want to build a temple for you." Wakati Daudi alisema, "Ndio Bwana, nataka kuzenga hekalu yako." And then God said, "I will build your house." Yes, Mungu akasema, "Nitajenga nyumba yako." Have you noticed in the Bible, whatever the people do for God, God is very happy and God will reward. Ushawahi kudua katika Biblia kitu ambacho tunafanyia Mungu, Mungu naye anaachilia zawadi kwa ajili yake. Let's say to God, God is a rewarding God. Mungu ni mungu wa Yes. Mungu ni mungu wa zawadi. Zawadi. So God remembers what we have done for him. Mungu anakumbuka yale tuliyomfanyia. And he will reward us. Na anatupa zawadi. Okay, so Amen. to people we can say words of appreciation. Uh, kwa watu tunaweza kuzungumza maneno ya kushukuru. Now how about when we say the words of the law, how can we say it? Na tukizungumza maneno ya sheria tutazungumzaje? Let me tell you there are a few ways to say it. Wacha nikwambie kuna njia kadhaa za kuzungumza. You have to write this down. Eh, andika hii chini sasa. The first is guidance. Guiding, yeah. guiding someone. Ya kwanza ni kuelekeza mtu. Kuelekeza mtu. Guiding someone is using questions to guide a person to think to find a solution. Kuelekeza mtu ni kumpa maswali ili afikirie jinsi ya kufikiria sehemu fulani. Okay, for instance we say, well I noticed some there was some problem with the children. What can we do? Kwa sababu kwa mfano anaweza kusema Nimegundua kuna shida na watoto wako. Tufanye namna gani ili tuwasaidie? But many people will say this. Wengi nao wanaweza kusema hivi. The children are disobedient. Watoto wako si watifu. It's because of you. Ni kwa sababu yako. You did not teach them right. Wewe huja waonyesha maadili mema. What is this? Ni nini hii tunaongea? This is accusation. Hii ni ku kushitaki au kuhukumu. Does accusation motivate people? Hukumu kweli inatia watu moyo. Uh, no. It makes people feel discouraged and angry. Aha, inafanya watu wanakasirika na watu hawa nakosa amani. So, first we can use words of guidance. Ya kwanza, hebu tutumie ye mwelekezi. Okay, so if we talk with someone, the person has spiritual power. Uh, tukiongea na mtu ambaye angali bado hako na shida and then we ask the person na tunauliza swali what can we do to work on this spiritual problem e, tunaweza kufanya na mna gani ili tukusaidie kwa maisha yako ya kiroho what can you do and then you can be spiritually stronger tunaweza kufanya na mna gani ili ukawe na nguvu za kiroho now most people have you know who have been coming to church they will be able to say yes read the bible and pray and obey god mm, when you are mekuja tunawambia tu soma biblia tii mwenyezi mungu na usonge bene and then we will say wow good answer and to say maha inakuambia hii ni jibu sawa sawa and then we can ask tunaweza uliza what are some problems that stop you doing it Ewe, kuna shida fulani ambazo pingine zinaweza kukuzuia usitekeleze na kutenda mapenzi ya Mungu? Just guiding. Yaani unaelekeza tu, unaelekeza tu. So what stops you praying? Ni kitu gani kinakuzuia usiombe? We don't have to accuse. Atuhitaji uhukumu. We just ask what makes it hard for you to pray. Tunauliza nini ambayo inakufanya unakosa kuomba? Well, the person says, well, 
Because I worry too much. And then we guide again. Well, what do you worry about? And do you think worrying will solve the problem? How can you put down the worry? How can you trust in God more? So we guide the person from one question to another question to keep guiding the person to think of ways to improve. Do you understand this? Mm, so we yeah, ride yeah. from one question to another. Una saidia moja hali mungine. And so if someone says, Oh, I'm unhappy all the time. Ah, utasikia mtu ya kisema, Mini sina raha kila saa. Then we'll say, uh, What happened? Una muliza, Nini metendeka? And the person will tell you a story why he's unhappy all the time. Mtu ya takuambia historia yake kwa nini ye ya hana raha kila wakati. And then we'll ask the result. So, how does it affect you? Mm-hmm. Sasa, unaheza kumuliza, na hii, sasa, inakuadiri na mnagai. And then we'll say, well, uh, so how does it make you feel? Ah, una sasa, uta atajiba, lafu na muta muliza, na hii, inakufanya unahisi na mnagai. And you want to work on it. Na unataka, tuweze kusuluhisha kivipi. And if you want to work on it, what can we do? Na utuita kusuluhisha, tufanya na mnagai. So we ask questions like, Tunauliza swali kama, what caused you to have this behavior? What caused you? Nini ilisababisha? And, and what are the results? Na matokeo ya mambo ulio ya fanya. How does it make you feel? Na inakufanya unahisi na unagani. You want to change? Ila inemidu badilike. How can you change? Unareza kubadilika na unagani. And what are the difficulties? Na kuna ugumu gani katika kubadilika. How can you overcome the difficulties? Now this is counseling skill. When we have time, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but very important to ask questions instead of accusing people. Now for instance, you go home and your your spouse, your family member yells at you. Aha, pekini watoka hapa, waenda nyumbani na unapata ha, kini umana wanauliza maswali magumu na wanapupigia kelele. Very natural for us to yell back. Aha, ni raisi sana katika hali ya ubinadamu wakawaida tukawezo kurudisha mabaya kwa mabaya. Instead we can say, Badada ya kifani hili. There must be something that made you feel unhappy. Can you tell me about it? I care about you. Now, I, I, I want to tell you, most people are not used to that kind of conversation. Okay, the next kind of conversation of the law, the first of the law, the first is guiding, the second one is teaching. Ya kwanza tunazumuza kuhusu kwenekeza, ya pili tunazumuza sasa kuhusu mafunzo ama kufunza. Now teaching, sometimes it doesn't have to come in a form like me teaching now. Kufunza mara nyingi hakuwezi kutoka kwa mtu kama nini kila saa, kila saa ni kifunza. For instance, for many women here, many wives here, mara nyingi kwa wamama wake za watu mahali hapa, you can talk to your husband like this. Oweza kuzumuza na mume wako jizi hivi. Do you know I really like you to listen to me when I talk? Una, I feel very happy when you listen to me when I talk. Unajua kwamba mimi nasikianga vizuri wakati unasikiliza mimi nikiongea. Instead of saying you have to listen to me. Badala ya kusema we nisikize. Or say you are not listen to me. Wewe unisikii. But instead we can say when you listen to me I feel very happy. Ah, yani unamwambia wakati unanisikiza mimi nasikianga vizuri sana. To say I'm happy when you do that. Ninafurahi ukifanya hivyo. It's a way to guide a person to do that. Ni njia ni njia kumuelekeza mtu kuanza kufanya mambo mazuri. For instance, he washed the dishes tonight and then you say, I'm so happy he washed the dishes. Aha, pegine leo amesafisha vyo kwenye mekulia sapa ama lanji. Unasema, eh, leo baba, nafurai umeweza vyo kwenye mani. 
We are indirectly teaching. Yani vile tunasaidiana katika njia ya hekima. To say that when you do this sort of thing is a right thing to do. Kwamba ukifanya jambo hili ni jambo lililo sahihi na lililo sawa sawa. And sometimes we can say something like this. Wakati mwingine tunaweza kusema jambo la aina hii. I'm not arguing with you. Mimi sibishani na wewe. I'm not accusing you. Na tena mimi sikuhukumu. I'm just telling you my feelings. Na kuambia hisia zangu. I just want you to understand my feelings. Nataka wewe uelewe hisia zangu. That this is another way of teaching the person. Hii ndio njia moja ya kufundisha mtu. I want to I want you to listen to me and it comforts me. Nataka uweze kunisikiza ili ukaweze kunipa moyo. Now but there are harsh way of teaching. Kuna njia ambayo ni kali sana ya kufundisha. For instance you can say as a husband you have to listen to me. Kama unaweza kusema kama mume lazima uishie. As a my wife you have to wash you cook the meal before I come home. Lazima wewe kama mke wangu upike chakula kabla sijafika. Now that is harsh way of teaching. Hiyo ndio njia ambayo ni ngumu sana ya kufundisha ni tena kali sana. Instead we can say Badala yake tuweza kusema When I come home and you have cooked the meal I'm very happy. Eh napokuja kama umepika chakula nasiaga vizuri sana. Let me ask you. Basi nikuulize. Are you willing to say that to your wife? Unaenda unaenda kusema hivyo kwa mke wako au mke wenyewe wako hapa mtasema hivyo. Because we might think that will spoil my wife. What do I say, my mother? Let me ask you, wives here. What What do you say, my mother? Do you like your husband to say that to you? Eh, muna pena wa umezelo oge ibo. And you say, Wow, it's so wonderful that you cook for me. Why? I am such a I am such a wonderful wife. Aya na muna kwa ni muke waja. Let me ask you. Does love include making the person feel good? E upendo una unu yani umejumuika na mtu kusikia vizuri. Yes. Does love mean you have to pinch the person? I'm teaching you. I'm loving you. I'm teaching you. Yani upendo si wazi kuchuna mtu na kupenda na kupenda na wewe yangu na mchuna chuna hapa na wili hivyo. Do you, we want to make people feel happy? Lazima to 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 find what to want to see, what you want to do. Does God make us happy? Mungu na tufanya tu na mungu na ra. Yes. And I want to say that in the Bible, the warnings is all for the people who sin and don't repent. Na na tena na taka ni rudi e. Onyo ni kwa watu ambao wanatenda dambi na tena awapo tayari katika toba. When Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because the Pharisees don't repent. Yesu alipo agalia na ku ku kuashudu wa mafarisaya kwa sababu awatuko makosa yao. Now when Jesus rebuked the disciples for lacking faith. Yesu bile aliwa ali aliwaonya wanafunzi kwa sababu hawafuatani na yale mafundisho. Immediately he gives them hope. Yaani an, alikuwa anawatia tumaini. He said, if you have faith like a little mustard seed, you can move the mountain. Mko mkiwa tuna imani kama haradali mnaweza kusongesha mlima na ukasonga kwa imani. So even when Jesus rebuked them, immediately he gives them hope. Yesu alipo wapatia alipo wakemea. Alipo wakemea alikuwa anawatia moyo. Instead of saying you have no faith, you have no future. Bapele ya kusema kuamba wewe hauna imani, hauna hatima ya masha yako. Does Jesus say to people, the disciples, you have no future? Yani, Yesu asha wange yako na wanafundu yako wakawambia kuamba hamuna hatima? No. And he said, these things are due, you do greater things. Yesu wakawambia kuamba, hii vitu munaweza kufanya na munaweza kufanya vitu vibugua sana. Isn't it wonderful? Jesus said we can do greater things. But not better things than Jesus. We can do better things. But there are people who have bigger meetings than Jesus' meetings. There are 
People here on earth, they have preached to more people than Jesus. So those are greater things. But not better things. So we see that Jesus really appreciates people and gives people hope. And when Jesus teaches people, he doesn't make them feel bad. But many parents talk to the children. Now, hold you don't mind. They will say, You're no good, you're no good, you're no good. <laughs> so they're making people feel bad when they are teaching them. So we need to think about what we say before we say it. Let me tell you, I have the experience of handling different difficult people. Or difficult situation. Very often I will send a message to my wife first and ask her opinion whether this is a good way to say it. And my wife has the wisdom to tell me how to make it better. Sometimes I even ask my co-workers and I ask them, what do you think? How should I respond to the person? And they give me opinions. So I look for ways how to say things better. Okay, now number three. Now no, we talk about the words of the law. First is guiding. Second one is teaching. And number three is commanding, telling yeah. someone to do something. There are gentle ways of saying it and there are harsh, uh, rough ways to say it. Gentle ways will be like this. Please clean, uh, clear the garbage can for me. I appreciate that you do it. I'm so thankful that you do it. So these are gentle ways. And then rough ways will be like this. Why didn't you clear the garbage? Do it now. Let me tell you. Is there a difference? A big difference. Basically, the rough ways is not respecting the person. Can we understand this? Gentle ways are that we respect the person and so we say in a respectful way. If we talk to the president of Kenya, you will be very polite, right? But if you talk to your spouse, sometimes you may be very rough. You might say, I've been with him or her for so long. That's how we talk. <laughs> but as we said, as we said, your spouse is the most important person on earth. From is it true that we should not hurt our spouse? Yes, 
restaurer. And if there is any problem with the spouse, that we should fix it today, today when you go home. Ah ah, kuna mapa mbaya haisaidu na mbaya tu leo 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 sahi ni kifika nubaya. Are you willing to do it today? Eh, uta 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 So he has apologized first. I cannot apologize first. But actually the one who apologizes first is the stronger one. Lakini hebu nikwambie siri, yule anayeomba msamao wa kwanza huyu ndiye ana nguvu. Okay? Now, so that's commanding and then now go through this again. First is guiding, say it together. Guidings. Guidings. Guiding and then teaching, commanding, and then the next one is accusing. Now we need to accuse sometimes. Accuse. Point out the sin. Point out the sin. Now accusing doesn't have to be rough and strong. Kushitumu hakutakitani kukue na ukali na kukue na mambo makali peke yake hapana But generally we want to start using guiding first Guidance first But if the person doesn't respond, doesn't obey, doesn't listen to God Kama mtu hasiki, hataki kuangalia 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 Tena haangalia vile mungu anabi umsaidia kurisponi kwa mitu zaki Then we can say to the person Unaeza ambia hule mtu Do you know that when you hurt this person? Unajua kwamba ukimuuliza huyo mtu. It hurts God. Unamuuliza Mungu. And God is unhappy with you. Na Mungu hapendezi na haya mambo na yafanya. And he can cause destruction in your life. Na anaweza sababisha mapigo makuu makuu kwa maisha yako. So I'm pointing out the consequence of the sin of this person. Na nakwambia matokeo ya dhambi ya kushtumu. Or to anyone who's committing adultery, it offends the Lord. It offends the Lord. We cannot despise 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 the Lord. Kwa sababu kile tunachopanda ndicho tutakachovuna. If we sow to the flesh we reap destruction. Tuki 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 panda mabaya tutavuna mabaya. So we can accuse the person or point out his sins in a gentle way. Tunaweza kushitumu au kumwonya huyu mtu kwa njia ya upole. But so many people accuse in a rough way even for a small thing. Lakini wengine wanashitumu kwa njia ya ugali hata kwa jambo dogo tu. You never wash the dishes. Wewe uwashangi kiongo hapa. You never listen to me. Hata unisiki. Instead we can say. Badala ke tuweza kusema. When you listen to me, I'm very happy. Ukini ukini sikiliza ana kuanga nala. And he can achieve the goal better. Ana unaweza kufikiria malengo kazi ya ilio sawa sawa na mzuri. Okay. And then the the last one. The muisho is condemning. Kulaumu. Now sometimes we need to condemn. Wakati mungine unaitaji kulaumu. If a person doesn't repent. Mtu kama hawezi kutu. We have to tell them if you don't repent. God's punishment will not be removed. Tunaweza kumwambia kwamba usipotubu adhabu ya Mungu haitatoka juu yako. And then you are, you know that you will be bind, you be when whoever we bind on earth will be bound also in heaven. Na chochote ambacho kimefungwa duniani hata mbinguni kimefungwa. Your sins can follow you. Ma, matendo na dhambi zako zitakufuata it can be very serious inaweza kuwa jambo ambalo linakuwa na hatari nyingi sana a gentle way to condemn would, to say it is time to repent na njia nzuri ya kushtumu ni kusema kwamba ni wakati wako wa if you repent now god is very happy and we are very happy ukitu leo si tutakuwa na raha na hata mungu atakuwa na raha and a rough way to condemn would be na njia ingine ya kushtumu mbaya sana ni hii to say you have no hope wewe hauna tumaini umeisha 
You're worthless. I don't want to see you anymore. I just take a corner. I disappear from me. So, so, so we would move. that achieve a better goal? Now I hope what I talk about is it simple, quite simple to understand, right? You understand yeah. that? Now I mean the one by the one but it's something most people neglect. When you know, when talking at home, it's always saying, "Ah, you no good. Ah, I like, I dislike you." Ah, when you know, when you go and say, "Ah, sit down, you need me to cope, you need me to cope," and then the stack you are more than you see, I pay you for your video, and you say, "Ah." And that parts the family relationship. Na hiyo mara nyingi ina vunja usiano. And in the church too. One time I saw in a church they cook, you know, one person was cooking. And then another woman went up to her. And then took over the job and said, This is how you do it. Now, so in the church, this behavior will come out. When people will say rough, what was our man? What our man? Why did you do that to me? And then when they're angry with someone, now when I cast it hurts the relationship. And usually, a hurt relationship is hard to restore. Kawaida, usiano gumu ni gumu sana uleta katika ukawaida ukawa mzuri. Have you noticed that? Ushaidi wa hiyo. If you have heard someone in church, no matter how many times you apologize, the person seems to be still angry with you. Haijalishi ukiukosea mtu kanisani, mara nyingi haijalishi utaomba msamaha mara ngapi, maana ni ngumu sana mtu aliyekosewa kanisani kuachilia hiyo jambo. So it's better that we start out with talking gently with the person. Ni vizuri kuanza kuongea katika upole na huyo mtu. Guiding the person to Understand the situation and how to change. Na kumwelekeza mtu huyo aelewe hali ili aanze kuwa na utofauti. But some people will say, wengine watasema hivi. This takes too long to guide the person. Mm, inachukua muda mrefu sana kumwelekeza mtu. If I just yell at him, he solve the problem right away. Mimi nikimpigia kelele atanyamazia tu hapo na atarekebisha. But what happens is, is the result is more serious. Ah, mambo ambayo yako na uduru sana kuliko yale umeyateka. Let me ask you this. Is this an important teaching? Yes. Let me ask you the next question. Is it easy to learn it and change our way of talking? Is it easy or not easy? I tell you. It's not easy. See you right. When you go home and see something wrong with your husband or wife, your immediate reaction is It's not easy to change because of our sinful nature. Kwa sababu ya halizetu na maumbibe tuliumba nayo. We have a tendency to be angry. Tumeumbwa kwe wa na hasira ya haraka. And that is why Jesus said, Iposa Yesu wakasema, The good man from the good treasure in his heart will say good words. Yani mambo mazuri kutoka kwa hasina mzuri itawangea mambo mazuri ambao ya taweka hasina mzuri pale lele. And bad things will come on the bad treasure in the when we have this love and gentleness and mercy on people, then we have more gentleness. And also, we think before we talk. What I want to achieve. 
then it will be much better. Kila ambacho nataka kufikiria kitakuwa kizuri zaidi. But this is something we need to learn and practice. Ni ni jambo ambalo tunahitaji kujifunza na tuweke katika matendo. Now if we have time tomorrow we can practice this. Tukiwa na nafasi kesho tutaweka haya katika matendo. That in a small group that one and then we talk about one situation and then you try to find a way how to talk through that. Tutakuwa tukizungumza katika vikundi vidogo na kama tutakuwa na njia ya shida tutakuwa tukitafuta suluhisho katika ile vikundi kidogo kidogo. Now I encourage you when you go on today. Nataka nikupe moyo na porudi nyumbani leo. Think before you talk. Fikiria kabla hujaongea. And see if you can change the way you talk. Uone jinsi unaweza kubadilisha hali yako ya maongezi. That we want to make the other person feel better. Kwamba tuwafanye watu wengine wahisi vizuri na sisi pamoja. And also to resolve all the hurt feelings in the past. Ili kwamba tuweze kuweka mbali mambo ambayo tumeyazungumziwa na yametufanya hapo awali. Do you want to work on it? Nataka kubadilika. Let me tell you, if any of you will tell me. Nataka nikwambie hata wewe utaniambia. It's too hard to change. Ni ngumu sana kubadilika. It's too hard to think of what to say. Ni vigumu sana kufikiria kabla ya kuongea. Our reaction comes too fast. Mama yani hisia zetu zinakuja kwanza. I done this teaching in many churches. And some minister came back and told me. Last night I handled this with my wife and she was so happy. And one of them included Washington. Na mwingine yule ambaye alihusika sana alikuwa ni ndugu mchungaji Washington. And he told me that he changed his way Aliniambia alibadilisha jinsi ya kuongea na mke wake. Iko wazi. Mke wake iko pale na ushahidi wa kutosha. Yes. He change much or not much or not enough. Anauliza mume wako alibadilika sasa kwa sawa sawa ama bado bado bado. I appreciate the much anasema anakubali amebadilika vizuri sawa sawa so he has changed much right amebadilika zaidi si ndio glory to god utukufu kwa mungu amen so to not work on that usiku huu ye kufanya kazi kwa ajili ya kazi hiyo now you might say there's too much homework unaweza kusema kwamba nimewaachia kazi nyingi ya kufanya mbaya the homework today Actually, if you take notes already, that's the homework. Ah, kazi ya nyumbani leo ili umeani katu leo hiyo ni kazi ya nyumbani mzuri. So what are the words of grace and the words of the law? Sasa angalia maneno ya neema na maneno ya mungu. And then you just write a list of things and put your name down. And utaandika na weke ijina la kopale. And hand it to me. Na utaandika. And then we'll have some people to correct it. Na tutakuwa na nafasi ya kurekebisha baadhi kuwetu watu watakuwa hawatajaoje jibu sawa sawa. Sawa sawa. Now any question? Any question? Swali sasa. Some people might say my wife, my spouse is too terrible. Watu wanaweza kusema mke wangu, mume wangu ni hatari. Sikii nitamwendea namna gani? No matter what I say, he or she is still angry. Hata nikizungumza mambo mazuri kwa upole namna gani? Yeye ni mtu wa kukasirika kwa na sura ya kazi kila saa. So no use to be gentle. Ah, yaani yeye si mtu ambaye ni mpole. And I want to say this, a bad relationship for many years is hard to change. Ataka ni kuambie, tumekuwa na usiano mubaya, kwa muda mrefu sana, diposa ni ngumu sana kubadilika kikafu. But at least if we start to work on it, it improve on it, even if we improve 1% a day, 100 days will be 100%. Aha, kakwe kuanza kuogelesha mambo vile uliofundishwa, hata akianza kutekeleza mambo haya kwa percentage moja tu, kukua kwamba, ata songa mpaka pale tu. Be gentle with your spouse and there is always hope to change. Pardon? Be gentle with your spouse and there is always hope to change. Kuwa 
utulivu na mwanandoa wako maana yake hii itasababisha mabadiliko makubwa okay we'll close to the prayer now tutafika kwa maofi mama kile maswali utaandika kwa karatasi na uandike jina lako at this time when we think of someone who Nataka wewe umhurumie mtu huyo kwa sababu kazi ya Mungu iliyo mbele yako na yeye. And understand that people who hurt us have been hurt by people before. Wewe mwenyewe kwamba kuna watu wamedhulumiwa kabla yako, kabla ya yeye siku ambazo zimepita. So we have compassion on them and want to understand them and bless them and forgive them. Tuwahurumie, tutuwapende na tuweze kuwabariki wanapobadilika. So think of the person that has hurt you or you have hurt. Fikiria mtu ambaye ulimuumiza ama yeye alikuumiza mpaka hata saa hii ungali na uchungu wa kuumizwa na huyu mtu kwa maneno yake au kwa matendo yake. And ask God to help us to help handle this relationship. Na umuulize awize kusaidia katika uhusiano mlio nayo na yeye. Lord Jesus. Baba Mungu. Please forgive us. Baba tusamehe for hurting people so many times. Kwa kuumiza watu mara nyingi. We have said words that hurt people. Tumesema maneno ambayo yameumiza watu. Please forgive us. Baba tusamehe. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Tusafishe kwa damu yetu. We are truly sorry for our way the ways how we hurt people. Tuna tumeji hukumu jinsi tulivyokuwa tunafanya mambo yasiyo sahihi kwa watu. We have hurt almost everyone around us. Oh, tumeumiza watu hata waliokuwa karibu nasi wengi. I'm sorry for our sin. Tumeoa tumehuzunika kwa dhambi zetu. Please forgive us. Baba tusamehe. Wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. Tusafishe kwa wasafi kwa damu ya Yesu. And for the people who have hurt us. Na watu ambao wametuumiza. Or we have hurt. Na sisi tumewaumiza. Please help us to have compassion on them. Tusamehe tuwe na moyo wa huruma kwa ajili yao. They have been hurt by people. Wameumiza na watu. We want to bless the person. Tunaweza kubariki tunataka kubariki mtu gani? And forgive the person. Na tusitutu tuweze kusamehe huyo mtu. At this point think about the person. One person that You find it hard to relate to. Wakati huu fikiria mtu ambaye umeshawahi kuumiza kwa maisha yako. Lord, I want to forgive. Mungu nataka kusamehe. I want to bless the person. Nataka nibariki huyo mtu. I want to understand the person. Nataka nielewe huyo mtu. I want to build up a good relationship. Nataka nijenge uhusiano mzuri wa huyo mtu. Lord Jesus. Oh Baba Mungu. Every idle words will be brought up to the judgment seat in the future. Ile mambo mabaya yataletwa katika hukumu baadaye. Help us to repent. Msaidie Bwana katika toba. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. We want to go home. Tutaka kwenda nyumbani. And bless the people around us. Tubariki watu walio karibu nasi. Tuwashukuru. It's so wonderful to have them. Ni wakati mzuri kuwa nao pamoja. Hata kama wana kasoro. Tunataka kuwashukuru. Na tuwabariki. Katika jina la Yesu tumeomba. Amen. Amen. Amen.